majesty be summed up in one word, in one word, in one word. I want to take just a few minutes and talk about what is a, a lot of people's favorite verse in the Bible. And maybe not the favorite, but a, at least on a lot of people's list, it's up there close to the top. That's in Ephesians chapter 2. And as we look down to about verse 8, we can very plainly see why that is the case. Paul writes in Ephesians 2 and verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now let's look at verse 8 for just a moment, and I, I guess it's probably pretty obvious to you already why this would be a lot of people's favorite verse. For by grace you have been saved. People like that part, don't they? For by grace you have been saved. And not of yourselves. That's a, a part that people like a lot too. It is the gift of God. Well, I, And I'll be honest, I like all of this whenever I read through it too. And I see in verse 9 that it's not of works, lest anyone should boast. Boy, that all of that really sounds good, doesn't it? But I want to take just a moment and look at two words that in all of that seem to get glossed over and seem to get forgotten whenever we're talking about the salvation that has been given to us by God, the grace that He has shown towards us. And those two words are the words through and faith. When you look at those words, you realize that uh, they will throw a lot of a lot of kinks into a lot of false doctrine whenever you uh, try to line those up the way that they should be in there. Because the way a lot of people look at these verses, and especially verse 8 here, is that there is absolutely nothing that we can do. It's not of works, as we see in verse 9, that you or I do. We, we have nothing to do with our salvation. It's all about God's grace. But those two words, through and faith, show us that we do indeed have a part in our salvation as well. Now, I want you to think of it this way. I maybe have taken a $100 bill, and I've put that $100 bill in a little waterproof plastic bag, and I've gone to a fountain that's in the middle of the city, and I've put that bag in the water, and I've put a brick on top of that bag, and I've left it there, and I've walked away, I found you, and I said, hey, I just want you to know that I have put a hundred dollar bill in a little waterproof plastic bag in the fountain down the street here. It's underneath a brick. If you want it, you can go and you can get it. Now, there are a number of responses that you could have to that, aren't there? The first thing you could do is to just absolutely not believe what it is that I'm saying. So why would anybody in their right mind put a hundred dollar bill in a plastic bag in a fountain in public? Well, that might be a fair question to ask, but this is an illustration, so follow along with me. Obviously, you could choose not to believe that, but then there's another response that you could have, and that is you could say, wow, that is really neat for you to do that, and maybe you could say that's a really benevolent thing for you to do too, to be able to, to have that and, and leave some money out for someone to be able to find. But then, while you think it's neat and while you think it's great and a wonderful thing, you don't act on it. You, you go on your way. Maybe you think, well, I don't really need it. And so you don't, while you believe that it's a great thing, you don't actually do anything with it. Then there's a third response that you could have to that. And that is to say, thank you so much for telling me that. You believe what it is that I say so much and you realize the value of it that you yourself go down the street you get into that fountain, you reach down, you lift up that brick, and you take that money out for yourself. Now, let me ask you a question. In either of those cases, and it won't matter what it is, I put that money out there for someone to have. And the person who went and got it, did they earn that money? Well, no. Nobody would argue that they earned it. But I gave it to them. It was a gift. But the difference between the second and the third person is what? The third person actually went and got it. They acted on their faith in me. And that's why those two words in Ephesians 2 and verse 8 are so important. For by grace, God's benevolence, God's favor, God's giving, you have been saved through faith. 
You see, there's something that we have to do. We have to act on what it is that God has given us. You realize that as it pertains to works, Paul will go on and write about how we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. That's what we as Christians, that's what we are as his church are, that we should walk in them. <laughs> that, that verse is full of us doing things, isn't it? And when you consider as well the response that Jesus gave to a group of Jews who he was teaching when they asked in John chapter 6 and verse 28, Oh, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? You know what Jesus said? Oh, no, 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 don't work. Don't work. There's, there's no works involved in this. It's all grace. No, that's not what Jesus said, is it? Jesus said this. This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. Even believing in Jesus is categorized as a work, if you will, which, by the way, I've never understood those who say that there are no works that anyone can do. What list of works can we do and what list of works can't we do? Because obviously we're supposed to be doing something. As we think about this, too, I'll give you one more verse to, to close on. What it is that we read in John chapter 3 and verse 36, that these are the words of John the Immerser, John the Baptizer. And I like the way that the American Standard Version puts it in this verse, too, about how he who believes in the Son has everlasting life, but he who obeyeth not, he who obeyeth not will not have that everlasting life. Think about that. You and I have something to do. You and I have to act on our faith. Faith without works is dead, as James writes in James chapter 2. So don't forget about those two words in that. Through faith, through the things that you and I do in conjunction with God's benevolence. No one's suggesting that you and I have earned our salvation in any way. No more than that person earned that $100 bill in the bottom of the fountain that I talked about earlier. But we do have a part. We do have things we have to do. And we do those things through faith. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of One Word. I hope that this has been beneficial and profitable to you. I hope you'll join us again next time as we look at another word and what God has to say about that word. But between now and then, I hope that you will study the one word that is the most important word of all, and that is God's word. All your goodness and glory contained in one word and love's the word. Love's the word.